today will be quite uh, uh, in relationship with uh, what we saw just in, uh, in the previous talk. It's about machine learning and uh, remote sensing. And I will introduce to you to uh, the new capabilities of the Orpheo toolbox uh, brought by uh, Bridge to OpenCV in, in this field. So um, this is the outline. Uh, usually, uh, I will start by OTB facts and figure, and but I decided to do to do it the other way. So I will start by uh, talking about machine learning uh, for remote sensing, uh, what is required, and then I will introduce how we we brought OpenCV into this. Uh, <coughs> I will give two, uh, uh, one not so short example and another short example. <laughs> And I'll end with facts and figure. Uh, so uh, if you want to leave early for the lunch, you get the, the interesting message. <laughs> OK. Um, but still, uh, yeah, there are things to know before I start. So uh, machine learning steps, especially uh, supervised classification, we have two main steps. We have training. So this is something we saw uh, in the previous, in the previous uh, pr uh, talk. And we have classification. So the training is, uh, is estimating some kind of model from training samples. And then the classification is applying this model to decide the class of uh, specific entities. And in remote sensing, we, we usually classify well, pixels, so image from image or features, like we, we saw uh, from a uh, digital elevation model in the previous talk. We can also classify uh, segments or objects. And we may also classify uh, patches or even images, if we have several images and we want to roughly separate them. Uh, so that is to know about machine learning, about remote sensing. And about OTB, you just need to know for now that it is a C++ template library. And it also has application plugins, so something you can use without compiling anything from command line or from Qt. So uh, in my talk, everything uh, I will show, uh, I've done it with the command line interface. So uh, as there is not a single specific line of C++ to, <coughs> do, to do this. And so here I will just introduce you to the world pixel-based classification chain in OTB, and then I'll show you how we brought OpenCV into this, and many more things. OK, so requirements for machine learning for remote sensing. Uh, obviously, we need a machine learning algorithm. So that's a start. Uh, in OTB, uh, until uh, 3.18.18, we, we used uh, SVM, uh, especially the libSVM implementation. Uh, it is widely used in remote sensing. We saw this in the previous talk. It has few parameters. Uh, as previously said, it is good in high dimension uh, feature space. Uh, we can solve non-linearity problems with the kernel trick. It has strong theoretical guarantees. And it has extension to multi-class problems. We so we so, so you, uh, the, the, the main algorithm is a two-class uh, solver, but you can extend it uh, quite easily to multi-class problems. So uh, in fact, the algorithm <laughs> tried to, to find the best, uh, the best separation uh, between the, the, the set of samples. So it's the, uh, the best margin between the, uh, those, those two samples, set of samples. Um, but then we have to do other things, like uh, normalizi normalizing features image. Uh, for instance, here um, I'll show here you have an histogram of an image, and here there is a tiny, tiny, tiny blue, uh, blue uh, line. And in fact, this is another feature. And if I zoom in, I can see this is an NDVI, and this is an image spectral band. And this lives, uh, this lives between uh, minus uh, 0.6 and 0.6, and this, live, this lives between 200 and 600 and more. So. Uh, if we, it depends on the, uh, on the classification algorithm, but if we use something, uh, for instance, based on uh, Euclidean distance, then uh, this feature will absolutely dominate everything you can, you can um, uh, <coughs> infer from, from this feature. So uh, to avoid this, you can try to um, bring all the feature into a sa the same range. 
And it also enhances numerical stability if this range is something between 0 and 1 or something between minus 1 and 1. So this is the normalization. And there are several methods. You can do just linear min-max stretching, but it is not really uh, uh, resilient to uh, outliers. And you can also do uh, linear stretching by uh, clipping the histogram, or you can also use uh, centered radius normalization. So, um, and the important thing is, of course, you have to use the same normalization from for training step and for classification. So, in OTB, we we have an application that can estimate uh, the statistics from uh, from your uh, input image you will classify, and then uh, apply consistently uh, the normalization throughout uh, the the process. Uh, and then there is the training step. So uh, it is handled by the train SVM image classifier application until uh, 3.18. And starting 3.18, it's it has been renamed to train images classifier. Uh, you'll see why later. So um, uh, in our uh, application training data, uh, we use uh, we use GIS vector files. Uh, so we we require polygons. Uh, uh, um, delineating the, the training areas uh, with uh, an attribute, a class attribute uh, that you can specify to the application. And what we do uh, from this polygon is that we sample pixels within each polygon. Okay? But uh, as we may require many less training samples than the uh, whole available samples if you delineate it over really large areas, there is a random sampling of these of uh, these classes uh, for for each polygon. So this is uh, something you you only need the image and your uh, shape file with the training set, and we take care of all this all this uh, plum plumbing. Okay, and then comes uh, performances measurements. Uh, we have an application that's called Compute Confusion Metric application. Uh, we have uh, you can enter validation data or validation set. Uh, you should use a different validation set than the training set because it will help you get a more uh, uh, a more uh, realistic evaluation of the performances, and um, uh, you can use uh, either uh, different uh, polygons for 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 your validation <coughs> step or different uh, random sampling of the same polygons you used for the for the uh, for the training. And uh, this is uh, this application. It um, it uh, accepts the classification map uh, as a, as an input, so you can actually estimate the performances of the whole chain. I mean, if you if you have post processing or this kind of thing, you can. It's uh, it's a sp separate step. Okay, and we output some uh, widely known uh, measures such as confusion metrics, the kappa coefficient, which takes into account the lucky rate and uh, overall accuracy, precision and recall, and F-score for all classes. So this is about uh, performance measurement. And then, uh, once you trained your classifier and you estimated the performances, you may want to apply it to uh, other images or to your images. So um, we have also an application to do this. Uh, you can read back the model you, you, you estimated from a file. Uh, and the classification filter is a streaming enabled filter so you you can process uh, rasters uh, as large as you want it will just process it piecewise so if you have a very large raster this is interesting and also it will perform classification uh, uh, in a multi-threaded way so it might uh, help you get uh, gain some time and it handles so that's not really interesting but it handles no data field okay and then we have some post-processing. Um, we have regularization. So uh, in the previous uh, talk, we, we heard about uh, Markov random field regularization. We do not have this for the moment. But the goal is the same. It's to uh, remove, uh, to try to um, remove isolated pixels with, class, uh, with the classes different from their neighbors, uh, because they are likely to be noisy pixels. Uh, so here we have a simple approach, which is majority voting on a given neighborhood, and it is handled by the classification map regularization application, and more uh, regularization technique may, may come later. And we also have a fusion of classifiers application. Imagine you train different classifiers from different images or different feature set, 
uh, you have several classification maps and you want to take the best of each on one of them and this application will help you do this uh, either by a ma majority voting this time on the classifier on the classifiers or uh, you can also use something that is maybe more clever is dumpster shift a combination from confusion matrices this will take into account that uh, some classifiers are really inaccurate for this class and very very accurate for this one so it will take this kind of information into account okay so now meeting OpenCV so this is really great but we heard a lot of these two things first OTB is nice but SVM algorithm is a shame. I would like to do random forest boosting by using neural network or anything else. And also, uh, well, did you read this paper? Transient boosted learn rate in fuzzy infinite spaces. It's super cool. Uh, can, can we have it in the TB? R really, I, I would like to have it. Okay. So this is not, uh, this is a joke, but we, we really got some, some of these feedbacks. So uh, what we tried to do uh, with, uh, uh, to, to deal with it was first to define a minimal machine learning model, class model that will be able to embed any machine learning algorithm. And we came up with this. So uh, Orfeo Toolbox is a, a C++ template based library. So obviously we have inputs and output samples types. Um, we can set get training and target, uh, target samples. And we have here uh, some simple triggers uh, to train and to predict a single sample, and also some uh, function to save the trained model to a file and uh, to load the model from file. So the, the, class, the methods in orange, they are pure virtual. So <coughs> they, th these methods need to be uh, uh, over, uh, implemented for each specific classifier. So once we define this uh, generic, uh, very simple model, what? Here is what we, di what we did. This is uh, an extract from the Doxygen of Orfeo Toolbox. So here is not uh, our uh, very simple machine learning model. And here is uh, LibSVM. And we added, we, uh, we added uh, other subclasses uh, representing uh, all machine learning models that can be found in the OpenCV library. So you have a single app API with high level uh, methods and you can reach any of these algorithms. So you have, uh, I'll go into detail just here. So we have uh, SVM both from uh, LibSVM and from OpenCV. Uh, the nice thing is that uh, the one from OpenCV includes uh, meta parameters optimization. Okay, we have canaries neighbors from OpenCV. So this is a very simple classifier. We have decision trees uh, training. We have a a ADA boost, which is uh, also some kinds of uh, uh, um, committee of decision trees uh, uh, training algorithm. We have gradient bo boosted trees, uh, more boosting techniques. We have artificial neural networks, uh, which we add to, uh, to wrap around additional code to define the, the layer scheme. And we have normal Bayesian classifier and we have random forest, okay? <coughs> So what is nice uh, when we have all this classifier under a single API is that we can easily train uh, a whole set of them and compare them. So uh, this is uh, the result uh, we have actually in OTB testing. Okay, so we test all these algorithms against later.scale, which is a data set available from uh, LibSVM website. So here are the confusion matrix matrices. So it's with the default parameters, so don't try to say, okay, uh, why, why is Random Forest uh, performing uh, not very well? I'm sure you, you, you choose this one. You choose the data set, so Random Forest will be not accurate. No, no, it's just the default parameters. It's just to show you that you can very simply run all the algorithms and get, uh, and get the performances of each one of, the, uh, of them. So this is great, but now we can, we can answer to the first question. We can say, yes, yes, of course, we have this also. And to the <coughs> second, we can at least answer, uh, please provide the code as a subclass of machine learning model, and please, please, please write some tests, <laughs> because we, we, we will have, we'll have to maintain this funny algorithm afterward, and it will be uh, quite hard. Okay, um, and then we have something we call the machine learning model factory. 
Uh, I said that during the training step, you, uh, you actually can write uh, the model you, you, you trained uh, as a file, and this is left to the underlying uh, implementation of the algorithm. So uh, when we only add SVM, it was quite simple because we, we, we only wrote SVM models. So when we had to read back these models, we knew that it was SVM or nothing. But now uh, we've write a file, and then we do not know what uh, kind of algorithm we trained, and we want to read it back. And we have nine possible models. So, uh, and the user should not have to know uh, which, which model he, 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 he has to load. Uh, so uh, to solve this problem, we implemented a simple factory pattern, which uh, uh, I, I already mentioned that reading and writing models is handled by the, the, the underlying implementation of the algorithm. Uh, so we have uh, the, the reading uh, function returns uh, true upon success, and the machine learning model factory, it will just uh, try to instantiate each, uh, each model class and it will return the first that, uh, that uh, successfully read the, the, the model file. So this way, the user has no, no need to know uh, which model the, the, the file actually represents. So now I'll go briefly into some examples. Uh, yesterday I was uh, at a session uh, called uh, What You Can Do With OpenStreetMap, and uh, uh, it's funny because I actually uh, tried something uh, to, to, to illustrate this talk. Um, I took spot for take five data. Uh, these are uh, Sentinel-2 like uh, time series uh, which were uh, acquired during spot four end of life. So they tried to uh, get the same revisiting time as, um, as uh, the future uh, Sentinel-2 mission. Uh, so this, this uh, data set will will allow to prepare for S2 prep, uh, processing and value added products. And in this particular example, I focus on, for instance, uh, getting the water bodies mask as at best resolution possible. And uh, well, <coughs> I, I ran into some problem because uh, uh, I had no training, training areas or training samples, and I'm not very good at uh, photo interpretation, and I'm not an expert in water bodies and, and land use and all those, all those things. <coughs> but I knew about OSM, OSM so I, I, I tried to uh, simply use the OSM data as a supervision for the algorithm. So I derived uh, two classes. One is uh, made of uh, water elements from open street, open street maps like a pond, river, bank, uh, reservoir, uh, water. And uh, class two is made uh, of anything else. <laughs> I, uh, I tried to sample some, uh, some of the other uh, type of uh, classes you can find in, in, in OpenStreetMap. And uh, from this, I got a quite large uh, shapefile uh, for my uh, area of interest. And I selected uh, 1,500 1, for each classes for training and uh, 3,000 for each classes for validation. So here is what the data set looks like. So these, uh, you, you have the acquisition dates. So I selected three images. What's interesting here is we still have snow in the mountain here, and we have uh, also some shadows. And then here we have more shadows, but uh, OK. And here we have still more, shadow, more shadows. And the multi-temporal uh, information, it will, yeah, OK, <laughs> I'll try to go very fast. <laughs> it will uh, allow you to uh, somehow uh, mitigate the, the problem with, with those shadows. So uh, here is the training set from OSM. So you see here the river. Uh, here it's the other class. And here is the validation set. I just need to mention that this polygon is uh, extracted from a SRTM water body mask. It's not from, SR from uh, OSM. Okay. And here are the results for the four classifiers I, uh, I choose. Uh, well, SVM RBF uh, won almost all the time, except from this date where uh, Random Forest uh, did a better job. In fact, you have a uh, 3K pack coefficient here. The first is the one estimated during tra training set. 
uh, training step, the second is estimated from the validation step, and the third is estimated from the validation set, but including the C. Okay, so including the C is it uh, increases the kappa co coefficient in all in all uh, cases because it's really simple, uh, simple, uh, uh, a, a simple problem. Uh, what you can see also is that uh, there is a slight increase be between kappa learn and kappa val one. Uh, this is probably because the learning set is more. It, it has been randomly selected. It, it, it seems to be uh, more difficult than the general problem. <laughs> okay. So anyway, uh, I selected uh, I selected uh, the three winning classes uh, classifications. So one from uh, each date. So this is SVM RBF for the first uh, date. This is Random Forest for the second date. And this is, uh, is, this is uh, SVM RBF for, for the last date. OK, and then I did a majority voting combination of this algorithm, a regularization with uh, radius 1. And here is the final accuracy I got. So I got uh, the Kaval, Kappaval 1. To up to uh, uh, 0 0.95, and this is the final classification result. So I, everything I did here is just uh, launching the command line application. It's not, there is nothing specific. Okay, so this is just to give an example of what can be done just uh, with with those tools. And then uh, I would like to briefly, briefly describe, <laughs> very briefly describe uh, something that is coming next. Uh, with uh, Pleiad data, which are very high resolution data, I mean uh, uh, 0.7 to 0.5 uh, meter resolution, uh, it's not very relevant to do a pixel-based classification because, uh, because of the heterogeneity of the data. So uh, instead, we, we, we can do object-based classification, which means we uh, classify the region segmented for, uh, from a segmentation of the image. Okay. And this can capture more information like uh, statistics or shape or even neighborhood or th this kind of thing. So come in next in our field toolbox, uh, an application to, uh, to perform the exa exact large scale segmentation of a very large image. So it will allow you to, to have the, the segmentation as a shape file. So you enter the image, you output the segmentation as a shape file, and it has almost no size limitation. So because Pleiad images are very, very huge. And we have the vector layer classification application, which is basically the same as what I showed uh, shown here, but for ve vector data. So we classify polygons uh, with their attributes, uh, with the same algorithm and the same the same work uh, uh, workflow. Okay. Um, okay, that's that I said. So here is an example. So this is. Uh, one one ninth of a Pleiad image, so it's already huge. And this is the segmentation we got. This, this is the shape file overlaid uh, on the image, and it uh, shows um, uh, 171,000 polygons here. And we classify those polygons into uh, I don't remember maybe 10 classes or so something like this. So here, here is just the detail. So this is quite promising, and will come. Uh, in the next release, maybe end of October, something like this. Okay, so uh, facts and figure. Uh, I know I don't have time for this, but this is everything you need to know. But I just jump to this. Uh, here is all the resources. So best start is with the website, and if you want to have a close following, we have a Jira, we have a dashboard, we have Mercurial, we have all the this, these things. Okay, and. Just the take home message. So now we have LibSVM and all the machine learning algorithms from OpenCV in an extensible framework. We provide uh, all the side tasks and plumbing to apply those algorithms to large satellite images. And you can reach this tool through the C API or through the application plugin, which in turn can be run from Monteverdi 2 or QGIS. I didn't have time to talk about this, but okay, you will see this in another talk. Uh, and coming next in OTB, the vector equivalent of the raster classification tools and tools for the segmentation of very large rasters. Thank you. And sorry for. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Uh, and we've just got time for one quick question. If anybody's got any more detailed questions, if you want to uh, grab Julian afterwards over lunch, I'm sure he'll be happy to uh, 
Awesome. Question there, please.